Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to speak to you and introduce you to the new in initiative that uh, the French scientific community is launching. So I will start by just, uh, instead of presenting nice Arctic landscape, I wanted to show you that uh, this initiative is a real uh, result of a huge brainstorming of the French community gathering the glaciologists or the atmospheric uh, scientists to the linguists. Uh, and it has been a very successful work during three days at the Collège de France on the one scoping day after, a day after. So we had uh, uh, 500 participants and uh, 350 written contributions. So it has been a real brainstorming and what I am presenting to you is how the French scientific uh, community aims at uh, working in the Arctic. So this, uh, the process of this uh, scoping exercise was to really encourage uh, multi multidisciplinary uh, discussions. And uh, we had uh, enough, uh, nine themes, which are the basic uh, topics that we could uh, investigate in the, in the Arctic, but the audience targeted was involving all the French who, scientists who study or wish to invest in uh, scientific research on the Arctic, but also attract experts who are not necessarily focused on a particular Arctic environment, but who could contribute to the development of a more innovative research in the Arctic. So uh, this uh, scoping exercise was uh, uh, real, really uh, successful, and uh, 10 major research priorities have been uh, uh, designed to stimulate and foster the interactions between different disciplines. It's really uh, what is the main aim is uh, fostering the uh, interaction and the multidisciplinarity. We also uh, 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 set an inventory of forces and a series of recommendations on the means of observations and uh, modeling, strengthening, and developing. So I will present you these uh, uh, priorities from the more specific to the more uh, inclusive. So the first one is uh, uh, tackling the uh, Arctic and global atmospheric variability, so investigating the amplification and amplification couplings and uh, the impacts. So we aim at uh, identifying connections between Arctic variability and global climate, understanding the underlying atmospheric mechanism. Also clarifying the impact of the Arctic uh, cryosphere on global atmospheric variability. Improving our understanding of the mechanism responsible for polar amplification and in identifying the major uh, feedbacks. We aim also at identifying its impact on human activities and measuring how indigenous people perceive them, predicting what Arctic war warming will be during the next century. So you see that uh, in doing so, we are already involving the social sciences and the indigenous uh, people. The second uh, priority is uh, tackling the water cycle and uh, land ice, because we, there is a need in improving our understanding of the different compartments governing the Earth's water cycle, improving our understanding and modeling of the evolution of the Arctic land ice masses, and monitoring the contribution of the decline in uh, Arctic land ice. We also, because working in the present or uh, expecting uh, uh, developing a future scenario is important, but uh, to do so, we, you need also to characterize the past evolution of land ice masses, which is very important, and uh, the French uh, scientists are well introduced in this topic. The third uh, priority is tackling a changing ocean. We have already spoken about that, and, but from the physical environment to the marine ecosystem, we aim at studying the, the variability of the Arctic Ocean improving our understanding of the processes that control the distribution of Arctic sea ice, evaluating the links between regional changes and global ocean variability. You have also very important topic by uh, deciphering what is a regional 
versus the global, identifying also key interactions between the, the physical environment and the marine biogeochemical cycles, the combined effects of ongoing changes in the Arctic Ocean and develop future ecological scenarios for coastal populations. The fourth uh, priority uh, aims at uh, investigating geodynamics and resources because there is a lack in, uh, in the, in, of knowledge in this area and we aim at reconstructing the long-term physiography and paleogeography of Arctic basins, modeling the impact of this physiography on water and sediment fluxes, incorporating organic matter into uh, margin sedimentology and uh, identifying the specific characteristic of peri-Arctic areas in terms of resources. The, the fifth priority is a very important one because it uh, aims at uh, studying the permafrost dynamics in the context of this uh, climate warming that was mentioned before. And uh, what is very important is because of permafrost uh, thawing may release the greenhouse gases and will accelerate the warming. So a strong, uh, uh, strong feedback, feedback sorry, uh, should exist. And uh, investigating these uh, feedbacks between the climate, vegetation, snow, permafrost, and hydrology is a main priority. The sixth uh, priority is uh, in evolving uh, the terrestri Arctic terrestrial uh, ecosystem dynamics in the context of the global change. And uh, we aim at uh, assessing the impact of global change on ecosystems and the evolution of terrestrial organism. And the consequences of this, the processes which will be uh, investigated and studied for changing Arctic landscapes. Because you, you know that uh, with the sowing, you have uh, changing landscapes which are also very uh, consequent. The seventh, it's very important in, uh, in our mind because it's uh, 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 tackling the uh, indigenous people and the relationship between indigenous people and the global change. We aim at, at uh, evaluating the impact that the global changes have on the evolution of Arctic ecosystems and on the experiences of indigenous uh, people. The linkage between these changes and the values held by the society which are involved. We aim at uh, analyzing the solutions already implemented or proposed by comparing the diverse scientific and local knowledge. And the interaction between the scientists and the local people is very important. We aim at establishing ethical partnerships, opening the door to an uh, integrated uh, point of view. Eighth priority is something also very important because we, we think that uh, there is a, a need to investigate towards an, uh, um, the Arctic land sea continuum. Transfer between the land surface and the Arctic Ocean occur along a continuum which, and it's very important not to separate the compartments. If you want to understand the mechanisms to determine the fluxes and their impact on Arctic ecosystems and societies. So this is what is uh, called uh, critical zones investigation, which is developed now in the uh, scientific uh, area. The ninth uh, priority concerns the pollutions, the sources, the cycles, and the, the impacts. The Arctic is uh, particularly sensitive to anthropogenic pollutants, deleterious effects on ecosystems, human health, and climate. So we aim at improving the quantification of the anthropogenic sources of pollution to better characterize the trans transformation processes and their impact on the physical environment and local population in the Arctic region. We aim at better understanding the human impacts related to economic development on Arctic and uh, Arctic warming. Last but not the least, 
The tenth priority is uh, tackling the sustainable development in the Arctic region, impacts, implementation, and governance. And we aim at assessing the impact of economic activities in different sectors on the environment and on the society on a fine scale and globally. The objective includes social, environmental, legal, political, and health component. And we, it will contribute to the quality of life index and the analysis of governance mechanisms. And we aim at producing results in terms of strategic options presented to policymakers. So these are the 10 priorities which have been proposed by the scientific community. And uh, what's the next step? So this science plan is part of what uh, Prime Minister Michel Rocard introduced you as the upcoming French national roadmap on the Arctic. The French Arctic initiative permitted to reinforce ongoing international collaborations and cooperation and new partnerships are presently built on this new science plan. Also, not an Arctic count, country, and while physically present in the Arctic through the AVPEF base that uh, Ifreno introduced you, and the MIX uh, laboratory, which is the uh, CNRS University Laval, uh, named Takuvik, the French scientific community is now organized and structured to tackle these uh, identify transdisciplinary priorities through the new multi-year program that we are launching by the end of this year. So I thank you for your attention and uh, the science plan is to be released within the upcoming weeks and will be available in French or in English in printed version or in PDF. So if you want to have more information, you just have to contact me. Thank you very much.